It's July 13th, Wednesday. I'm taking a quick range trip this morning to test out this lab radar that I acquired. It's a, the new chronograph system that's becoming all the rage. Uh, it's based, uh, optical based chronographs are sort of falling out of favor with people because they're very susceptible light conditions. Magneto speed, which is attached to a barrel, is like considered more accurate, but now that the uh, Doppler radar systems used by commercial ammo manufacturers have been consolidated down into a smaller consumer level version, uh, is now making it more affordable for consumers such as myself to use Doppler, ra Doppler radar, which is supposed to be more accurate. So after shooting with the uh, lab radar, my first impressions are that it's pretty easy to use. It's a little bit finicky because you have to remember all the various buttons and their functions. And sometimes it's easy to forget that you didn't set up the chronograph to start reading uh, the, the bullets. So you have to like arm it first. You can turn it on and you have to arm it. Whereas with a standard optical sensor chronograph, you simply just turn it on. So like I shot a few rounds and I totally forgot to arm it. So you gotta watch and make sure that the orange light is set on so you know that it's armed. I did want to bring up the whole issue of gun control in California as of late. For those that don't know, the governor signed a bunch of bills that are going to be put into law with regards to gun control. Uh, quite a few of the major ones include the restriction or the reclassification of certain AR-15s as assault weapons, thereby banning them in California or the further purchase of those, purchase of those guns in California. But one of the other major ones that does affect pretty much everyone is the new ammo restrictions. We're now required to get uh, licenses to purchase ammo and there's gonna be background checks for ammo purchases. There's gonna also be other restrictions with regards to specific dealers who can sell ammo and this pretty much restricts online sales and for the most part there will be no more online sales of ammo to California. There are some exceptions and I'm trying to get uh, qualify for those exceptions, specifically with regards to possessing a Kirin Relic FFL license, 
or FFL and a California Certificate of Eligibility. I actually let my CNR FFL expire earlier this year, so I reapplied. I just sent that in, and I also sent in my application to the DOJ or the California DOJ with regards to a Certificate of Eligibility. And it's supposedly if you possess both of those, you're able to purchase from online vendors, uh, assuming they honor or they recognize the fact that you do possess that and it's still legal to sell to you over the internet or mail order. But the issue now at hand is the fact that we've let gun control become a major, I guess, problem in California, and unfortunately, it's going to continue to cascade down. And I foresee that the state, of, the state of California, is just going to continue passing more laws. And even though people try to vote and they claim they vote, um, even if we get the word out, I think it's very difficult to to fight gun control issues now. For, to the, with regards to, I guess, who's in office or who's getting elected. And a lot of these people, even though they're, they're voted for or they're considered conservatives or pro-gun, a lot of them are still being swayed to try to pass laws that they think are common sense but really aren't. And it's unfortunate that this is affecting the shooters in California. And I think sports shooting in California is going to take a huge hit. I've wrote a couple articles already in my blog with regards to shooting sports in California with the new laws, and I'm going to be composing a few more. I think our junior team is going to take a huge hit because AR-15s will now be a assault weapons in California, and that does restrict who can buy them, obviously, and who can possess them. And since uh, junior shooters coming up who shoot service rifle will be unable to purchase or use an AR anymore, uh, they're pretty much uh, SOL as far as service rifle is concerned. So I do think that shooting sports, especially competitive shooting sports in California, are going to die out uh, very slowly. And But there's going to be a huge shift, I think, the bulk guns now. I, as you can see, I've been shooting a lot of bulk guns as of late. That's because I think these are going to be the rifles that won't be, or the firearms that won't be as restricted as semi-autos are being now. So I think you're going to see a huge shift to F-Class in California. I think that's going to be a big thing now is F-Class shooting. Uh, but look forward to my blog i'm going to start writing more things about how the new gun laws impact shooting sports in california and maybe i can provide some some information to california residents as far as how they can you know mitigate these new laws and how it affects them in their life so my first impressions of the lab radar are pretty good i did a bunch of tests as far as using federal gold medal match 175 grain as a baseline and I came out with my standard or my my current load of 41 grains of AR comp with a 175 burger. But I also tried some Varget because I got my hands on Varget at a local reloading store or a gun shop. And I also tested out some 175s and some older brass just to get some chrono testing on that. But essentially the lab radar, the way it's set up is I have it set up on a bench. You line up the lab radar against your target, set up your, your gun offset to the lab radar. Uh, you can set it up anywhere pretty close, and you can define the settings as far as how far away the barrel is from the, uh, from the, uh, the system or the unit. And right now I'm just showing you one little finicky detail. For some reason I can't access the, the, some of the settings once it's in review mode. I don't know how to get out of review, review mode without turning it on and off. But essentially, many systems are pretty simple. You got velocity units, distance units, weight units, pro projectile offset. The projectile offset tells you how far away your barrel or your muzzle is from the, the unit. 12 is the default. I put it within 6 since it's within 6. Um, I'm using feet per second for velocity units, distance units, I'm using yards, and then weight units, grains, uh, velocity ranges. You can set where it takes the velocities. Um, I can't remember what I set it off. I think I did like 10 yards, 25 yards, 33 yards, 50 yards, and 100 yards roughly. And that's all going to show up in the internal calculator. Projectile weight is important if you're doing power factors arm time and some other things as far as trigger source and trigger level. Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory if you just look at it or read the menu system. As far as power is concerned, you have six AA batteries inside this unit, but you can also power it off what's cool is a USB uh, battery. And I'm just using an old anchor unit. I think the specs call for five 
I think it's five volts, at least one amp. This one does two amps max and it's, you know, smart sensing. So it provides enough power as applicable. So it's pretty cool. You don't have to run off six double A's because double A's are, they run out pretty quick and it's pretty, it's pretty cheap or inexpensive to get like a unit like this anchor, which is high quality as far as batteries are concerned. Um, but this is 13,000 milliamp per hour. So I have a lot of battery life in this. So it's pretty cool that you can get these off Amazon for 20 to 30 bucks, depending on how much power you need. Um, as far as arming the unit, you pretty much just hit this arm button or you go back to series mode. Say you're gonna define new series and then just hit this arm button until it goes orange and it's armed. And then uh, turn it off, it goes blue. As far as the uh, unit's concerned, it says you're not supposed to be in front of this unit when the radar's on, and I'm guessing because of the extra radiation that's coming out of it. That's the one thing I, did, I was concerned about with these things as far as uh, safety's concerned is basically the amount of radar waves you get off of this. So hopefully this thing isn't gonna give you uh, too much of a cancer risk, but then again, I mean, what isn't gonna give you cancer? So that being said, lab radar is pretty cool. Um, as far as this bench unit's concerned, the lab radar sells them directly for like 30 or 40 bucks. Um, I just manufactured one of my, myself with a 12 by 12 metal plate, uh, a couple of rubber feet and screws, and then um, I repurposed a ball head off my, my Gorilla Pod. So the 10 by 10 plate, or 12 by 12 plate was about six bucks, and then the rubber feet plus the 3 8 by 16 3 8 16 uh, threaded screw to go to the the tripod head that's like all total like under 10 bucks and then repurposing the head which i already had but you can get a head off of amazon probably between anywhere from 10 to 20 bucks so you can probably build one for the same cost of lab radar but if you already have a tripod head may as well just make the plate yourself um again lab radar is working pretty well uh these units are running right now at 550 500 bucks right now uh, it's a lot more expensive than the other uh, units out there. Can you get a crony for about a hundred bucks or less? And then the magneto speeds around two hundred, three hundred dollars. So this is far more expensive, but theoretically this is going to be more accurate. And again, you're not, you're not susceptible to light conditions since you use radar. You don't have to worry about sunlight, how much light is hitting your optical sensors. Um, as far as magneto speeds concerned, you're not clamping this to the barrel, so you don't have to worry about point of impact shifts. So you can actually just take. Any given time, any lighting conditions, you can get chrono data and then still group as well. So I think the lab radar is going to be quite popular. Um, from what I can understand, you can do firmware updates on this and then hopefully they can work out bugs uh, here and there. Again, like one of the finicky details was that I constantly had to turn on and off the unit, power cycle it, just to start a new series. So maybe I'm going to write them or maybe I just read the manual wrong on how to set up a new series correctly uh, be between uh, between arming and disarming the unit. Uh, but that's pretty much it. As far as the chrono data is concerned with the Varget, it looks like Varget's running a little faster than AR Comp, a good 75 to 100 feet per second. And I'm actually grouping better with 44 grains of Varget over 20, uh, 41 grains of AR Comp. So I might actually switch to Varget. My only concern with Varget is the fact that I can't get a lot of it uh, very easily compared to AR Comp. But we'll see how this goes, and maybe I'll stick to Varget if I can get more quantities of it uh, locally. This is a pretty short range trip. I only shot for about an hour and a half, roughly, but I just wanted to get the lab radar tested since I spent, you know, 500 or so dollars on it. Wanted to make sure everything's working well, whether or not to return it or whatever. But I shot a good 40 to 50 rounds, did some chrono data, figured out that Varget was actually shooting quite well. Uh, better than AR comp, I think, and getting better velocities or faster velocities, which would be better in the wind, uh, or for distance at least. The only problem with Varget is you can't get a lot of it. It's the most one of the most popular rifle powders around versus AR comp, which I can get very easily. So I'm probably going to see if I can get Varget in larger quantities and just start buying as much as I can and go with Varget. But we'll see. Um, Air comp, I shot it at 600 well. If I can shoot Varget even better, then maybe I'll try to get Varget. So West End Gun Clubs, it's actually getting a little bit packed right now. It's 6.30 on a Wednesday. I'm surprised there's this many people out here. But there's a, guy in the, a lot of guys in the back ranges working stuff out as far as shooting is concerned. 
Um, but as you can see here, as uh, far as testing is concerned, doing some chrono data, this is actually federal gold medal match. Um, this is just a bunch of uh, rounds I shot with my, my uh, with uh, Sierra Match Kings. This is my standard 41 grains of AR comp with the Burger OTMs. And here I was just chrono testing Varget. And this is actually 44 grains of Varget and 44.4 grains of Varget. It's actually getting a little bit of vertical stringing. I think that's just me on the gun. Um, I'm actually liking these two groups. Um, you might not like this vertical stringing, but I can work that out. That's basically me and recoil. And this 44.4 is pretty good. These are both pushing around 2740, 2750. And I like that, that velocity out of a 26 inch barrel. I think this will be pretty good versus my 41 grains of AR comp, which is only pushes 2650. So this is a solid 100 feet per second faster. And this will actually be better in distance, uh, less wind drift, and especially at, you know, beyond 600. So I might start getting Varget. Uh, Varget, I used to shoot a lot of Varget in my 308 before with my Savage, but again, Varget's hard to come by. So we'll see if I'll switch to Varget. I've got an AR comp load worked out, so you know, I can just use the AR comp. And maybe I'll just try to get Varget and use as my primary and AR comp as my backup load in this gun. Anyway, uh, this is pretty much it. It's a short range trip. Got the, got the uh, lab radar tested out and I'm liking it. Uh, I'm going to pack up all my stuff and get out of here. So today is July 13th, Wednesday, West End Gun Club. It's just a little bit after 630. Uh, that's it for today's range vlog.